Hello and welcome to this session on poets and poetry used in Kathak after independence. In the course of your postgraduate course in dance, you have already encountered possibly some of the other styles and the poetry that is used in them. In the case of Kathak, we have a very interesting tradition of uh, traditional poetry and then thereafter the opening of the sluice gates of using uh, modern poetry as well. And that is why this topic is of very great interest to me and I am happy to be sharing my knowledge and joy with you in explaining about poets and poetry used in Kathak after independence. Now the classical dance traditions of India have always drawn their insight and inspiration from the very rich and varied musical heritage that has been bequeathed to us. These musical gems span generations and genres and continue to inform and enrich the oral and visual firmament of dance. Hear me carefully because I am saying the oral and visual firmament of dance, both the hearing and the seeing of dance. As the nation came into being and unity was being celebrated rather than diversity, an interesting development happened in the arts. Although each dance form was typical of a region and had grown and flowered under the creative impulses of the region uh, as a result of which we can see certain links between um, say and I'm citing this only as an example the musical form of Tarana and the dance item Tarana both of which are associated with northern India now in turn the dance item draws its poses from the miniature paintings of the Mughals and the Pahari school of painting. After the nation came into being, however, there was a spirit of daring. It was encountered that a different trend was catching up across India. This was the trend of taking thematic, poetic and ideational inspiration from different parts of India in the faith and the belief that now each part of India could be justly claimed by all. It began with seeking poetry from anywhere in India. Probably one of the earliest examples of this was Maya Rao going beyond the traditional poetry of Kathak and persuading her guru Shambhu Maharaj to work with her on Jaydev's Geet Govind. Although at that time for we are talking about the decade of the 50s, Odissi was not really known nor its close connect with Geet Govind well established. This interest may well have been stirred by a keenness to explore the richness of Sanskrit poetry which went well with the classical status of Kathak. The linking of classical Sanskrit poetry with a classical style could not evoke any castigation or rebuke even in those uncertain times. The Geet Govind actually already had a sort of pan-Indian presence being performed in Kerala and Manipur as well. This preference for Sanskrit may well be true for among the very first ballets produced in Kathak by the Sri Ram Bharti Kala Kendra where the Kathak department of the Sangeet Natak Academy was located were Malati Madhav based on Bhavabhuti's classical work in Sanskrit which happened in 1958. This was choreographed by Lachu Maharaj and Birju Maharaj. The second such effort by the same institution was Kumar Sambhavam, based on Kalidasa's Sanskrit play, once again choreographed by Birju Maharaj in the year 1958. In 19, 1958 saw so the National Seminar of Dance organized by the Sangeet Natak Academy and these works were showcased there. The arranging of the many styles of dance on the same stage became a regular concern for cultural bureaucrats as it reflected the rich diversity of India and had the power of the spectacular. Earlier, there had been some attempts by pioneers like Madame Menaka to create dance dramas on Ritya Natikas, as they were called, which successfully brought Kathak, Manipuri and Kathakali. The three styles that Madame Menaka had learnt onto the same stage. At that time, she had written the poetry, selected the appropriate rags and tuned them to go with her vision of a smart international level 
presentation. Among the dance dramas that were created by her were Dev Vijay, Krishna Leela, Menika Lasyam, and Malvika Agnimitra, all themes drawn from classical Sanskrit literature. It was an attempt to find the common poetic base that could carry many dance forms which allowed Swati Tirunal to be discovered by non-Kerala based styles. Maharaja Swati Tirunal of Travancore wrote in five languages, Sanskrit, Malayalam, Hindi, Telugu and Kannada, although he was fluent in many more. He wrote about traditional lores, about itihas and Puranic stories and did so in the spirit of bhakti. For these reasons, he was a good choice for dance poetry across styles. Why only styles? He was also a good choice for dance poetry between banis within the style. Many still remember the use of Swati Tirunal's poetry by Prerna Sri Mali and Veronique Azan, representatives of the Jaipur and the Lucknow Gharanas, respectively, in a program that they did at the urging of the then director of the Kathakendra, Sri Keshav Kothari. But it is important to remember that there were some poets from amongst the traditional flag bearers of the form who were writing for the first time in independent India. They knew their dance like the back of their hands and so the poetic work that they came up with were truly suited to dance. Among such poet dancers were Pandit Birju Maharaj, Pandita Rohini Bhati and even on the rare occasion Pandit Durga Lal whose Tumri on the Khandita Naika, his senior disciple Uma Dogra often dances. Rohini Bhati was fluent in English, Hindi, Marathi and Sanskrit. She was not just interested in poetry from around the world but was quite adept at wielding the pen herself. She would often write herself to be able to get the right poetic expression that she was seeking. One of her self-written works was Prahlad Katha which was for solo enactment and was a very popular piece in her repertoire. She worked on three haikus of Japanese poet Basho as an ensemble choreography. She also worked on a composition based on Rabindranath Tagore's work Mon, around which she worked an ensemble choreography. Two poems of Bhagwati Prasad Mishra, Katputli and Suraj Ke Khilaf, both were explored by her for choreographies for a group. Rohini Bhate's principal disciple, Roshan Datye, was as daring as her mentor in using unusual poetry and unusual themes. In a two and a half hour long production called Shrishti, done in the year 2006, which looked at the Indian ideas on the environment, starting from the Panch Mahabhuts to the issue of renewable energy, she wove in the writing of traditional poets like Tulsi Das and modern poets like Dharampal Sahil's work Prakriti Ka Prem Patra. She also incorporated the work of poet Vijay Bajaj, Dharti Ke Kagas Par. In the same production, she also used Anjali Soman's poem Dehekta Asman, which started with the lines Kisi Dehekti Bhatti Jaise Sir Par Suna Asma Jale. Saturated in Veer Ras is poet Vasant Bapat's poem written in the Pavada style, Mard Marathyancha. This was written on Shivaji Maharaj and sung as the traditional Sahir sing it. This formed the base of a group treatment. The poet Vahina Bai Chaudhri was a low literate woman Yet she wrote powerfully, Man vadhai to vadhai, referring to the pull of the mother's home, was one of her well-known piece that Roshandate worked on. She also worked on the poem Shanta Shirke's poem, Vikal Man Aj Surat Asahai, depicting the Virahini, Virahutta Kantitha Nayaka. 
She also worked on Adi Nukul, which was written by Gyanpit Awadi Kusumagraj. Among Rohiniji's other disciples, mention must be made of Nilima Adhyay, who worked on the poetry of uh, Gyanpitha Wadi, the poet Kusumagraj. She also worked on Korn, uh, which was set uh, to a duet choreography. Her Guru Bahen Srimati Projakta Raj has worked on Marathi poems like Bapat's Maharashtra Geet, reinforcing Maratha pride. And she also worked on Indira Sun's poem in Marathi, Ekti or Alone, both for group choreographies. She has also used Harivan Shrai Bachchan's Pratiksha. The post-independence period has established the fact that as new icons are celebrated, replacing the old, anniversaries often serve as markers and milestones of new India. Even though ghazals and Urdu poetry are part of the repertoire of Kathak, it was to mark the centenary of Ghalib's death in 1969 that the ballet Hota Hai Sab Zeroz Tamasha Mere Aage, based on the works of Mirza Ghalib, was produced by the Sri Ram Bharti Kala Kendra's Kathak department. Senior Kathak dancer Uma Sharma has a special relationship with Ghalib as Sheikh celebrates his anniversary each year by leading a people's movement and procession to his house in Balli Maran in Shah Jahanabad or Old Delhi. She has been dancing the poet's work since many years out of the love she feels for Urdu poetry. One of the poet's best known works that she is famous for is Ah Ko Chahiye Kya Ek Umra Asar Hone Tak. The sancharis she goes into while enacting this poem are memorable when she does the line Shamma Har Rang Me Jalti Hai Seher Hone Tak. She abandons any Shabdarthak or Padarthak Abhinay, not even Bhavarthak Abhinay. And after depicting the flame of the Shama, she takes a creative leap and starts on with the showing of the Navaras. This is because the light of the fire is made up of all colors and each color is indicated by a rasa. Passionate about poetry in any language and from any period, Uma Sharma admits that she has articulated a lot of concerns by following the route of saying it through poetry. Very fond of good poetry herself, she has adopted her voice from the best of modern Indian poetry, be it Gopal Das Neeraj's Karva Guzar Gaya, Gobar Dekhte Rahe, or Harivan Shrai Bachchan's Madhushala, or even Kefi Azmi's Sam. She uses the power of poetry when it comes to voicing concerns of communalism. She is well aware that Abhinay is her strong point. What is more, as she is blessed with a melodious voice, she sings out the poetry herself. This never fails to grab the attention of her audience and also makes the song danceable by serving as a bridge between the mere singing of the song and the dancing of the song. In a conversation, she said that like good poetry, the idiom of dance must have the power to move people. And so Uma Sharma concentrates her efforts in that direction. Her facility with poetry, which is a quality that she would expect all dancers to have, and the fact that she remembers several hundred poems in Hindi and its many variants, and in Urdu as well, allows her to jump from one thought to another one language to another, all with the lightness of a gazelle and within the blink of an eye. The important skill here is to leave the familiar territory of Radha and Krishna with its fixed set of gestures, poses, movements that need to be restrung for every performance to leave this and to change the level and go into the abstraction. This can be achieved only if the underlying visual poetry is first visible and then internalized sufficiently by the dancer to be conveyed cogently for reception by the audience. Having been trained by Shambhu Maharaj, Uma Sharma admits 
that thinking is an essential part of abhinay thinking seeking connections identification of keywords that have large open spaces within them suited for exploring all that happens with thinking about it being the first step and trying it out being the second step in a lecture that she gave in 1997 the iconic dance scholar kapila vatsayan had said the national agenda introduced themes like shakuntala kumar sambhava and tagore's natir puja and visarjan even into school performances this trend of working on themes that reinforce nationalist pride can be seen in the many ballets that got created around figures of indian history like rani jhansi gautam buddh etc even a figure like lakshmi maharaj known more for his skills in evocatively translating poetry into abhinay was inspired to create a work called bapu ki amar kahani the accompanying trend in the world of professional dance was to work on the poetry of poets who had a national level if not a nationalist presence in this context with his international nobel recognition and his giant status titanic status in the arts tagore was a popular choice even roshan kumari known in the world of kathak for her sharp nritya and energized dancing worked on tagore in kathak and was hailed for her innovative ballet abhisarika based on tagore's work given the fact that tagore's birth centenary came within 15 years of india's independence and brought with it some funding opportunities it resulted in many dancers exploring the poetry of tagore in 1961 when the birth centenary of rabindranath tagore came the world of the arts benefited from two developments that happened around this happy occasion Firstly many important cities were allotted funds to build auditoriums for cultural pro- uh, performances that is why so many cities boast of a rabindra bhavan or a tagore theater the second was that some money was made available to create new works around his writings it marked a sudden production glut of tagore's poetry being made available in dance the shri ram bharti kala kendra's kathak kendra department came up with the ballet dalia based on tagore's work kolkata based kathak dancer rani karna started in 1978 to work on tagore lyrics because being in kolkata you cannot escape tagore anand dhara based on rag malkons served as the opening song to the concert it served as a nirgun bhakti piece to the nirakar roop of the supreme being the very word anand dhara conjures up a variety of images and ideas that rise and blend into one another images of endlessness of abundance and of the eternal flow of grace the dancer was faced with the dilemma of how to convey all of this the answer she found lay in innovation this innovation saw the use of movements all of which were from the kathak idiom but there was a complete absence of kathak's basic stance instead the body stretched in every direction and levels were explored while seated standing semi standing and bent allowing for the use of the vertical and horizontal aspects of space in 2011 when gitanjali lal headed the repertory of the kathak kendra she created a very interesting work from tagore's writings she used the sangan gagane ghor ghana ghat from the nobel prize winning gitanjali and creatively transformed it into a kavit of kathak thereby opening several possibilities of motif making for an ensemble a kathak dancer who has enjoyed poetry recalls pages of it in many languages and has employed it prolifically for use in dance is shovna narayan a senior civil servant now retired wife of an international ambassador 
Shovana has seen the best that the world has to offer, yet she is rooted in her own heritage. In 2014, she presented a Hasya Ras piece called Motilal Nandi, based on the nonsense rhymes of Rabindranath Tagore. Hasya is a rasa that most dancers shy of, but not Shovna. In fact, drawing upon the long-time friendship that her parents had with the poet Rabindranath Tagore, Shovana landed where angels fear to tread. She explored the poet's relationship with his muse, his sister-in-law Kadambari. The song, Tobu Mone Reko, written in 1888, four years after Kadambari's suicide. A song which Tagore sang in a recording made a few years before he passed away. This was the song she used to open the performance with. The way Shovna treated this story on a personal level is how she treats her love affair with poetry and does not hesitate to share her love with all. Continuing with a fondness for Tego, in 2011 she created a work titled Shuranir Shad, based on a Tego short story. It was introspection by Shurani, the Queen of Happiness, through her encounters with the Queen of Sorrows. It enters the dichotomies of desire and envy, imitation and original, happiness and sorrow. A year later, a year that marked the 90th anniversary of Kazi Nazrul Islam's poem, Bidrohi. She paid homage to this great master poet and musician by performing it on an Indo-Bangladesh platform in a bilateral initiative. Often, and especially in Delhi, this kind of bilateral creativity happens as Delhi is also the diplomatic capital of India. Between 1993 and 1998, she pioneered the genre of dance enactments to philosophical themes with eminent philosopher, the late Professor Ramchandra Gandhi, grandson of Mahatma Gandhi. These enactments were based on the lives of contemporary thinkers and sages like Gandhi himself, Vivekananda, Ramana Maharishi and Swami Ramakrishna Paramhans. She also rejuvenated the solo narrative tradition of North India in which Kathak was originally located. She presented in 1996 Shakuntala and in 2000 she did Yeshoda. Shovna has a close association with this work of the Rashtra Kavi, the national poet Maithili Sharan Gupt, that starts with a very poignant lament. Sakhi ve mujse keh kar jate. The modern day dancers who learned the Raigad Gharana of Kathak have the advantage of a very distinctive Nritta repertoire. But traditionally, they have been dancing the Abhinay pieces of both the Jaipur and Lucknow Gharanas. The new generation of dancers, however, encouraged by state patronage extended by the government of Madhya Pradesh in the post-independence period, attempted to give the Gharana an equally unique Abhinay repertoire. In a form of regional jingoism, they explored poetry of their own soil. Thus, poets like Padmakar, Makhanlal Chaturvedi, Subhadra Kumari Chauhan, Kali Das, and Isuri became the Madhya Pradesh poets that they chose over all others. Dancers like Rashmi Vajpai, Dr. Vijaya Sharma are amongst those who use this poetry, which carries with it a whiff of the region's soil. Padmakar has been danced by Prerna Srimali of the Jaipur Gharana too, as have been the verses of Guru Gobind Singh. She has worked on Kabir as well. Srimali explains that her decision to explore Kabir was partly driven by Pandit Kumar Gandharv's famous comment, Kabir ko ghungru nahi, which implied that Kabir's leap towards formless was so perfect that it could never be enacted in a form like dance that must use the concrete body. The attempt to resolve that paradox by Srimali is a brave but rewarding one. 
It required the dancer to draw on her experience and inner judgment while inhabiting the undefined spaces between the concrete and the abstract. I wanted to create a strong surface for amurt or abstraction. I wanted to condition the stage as well as the audience to watch Kabir's philosophy. The point was to create the formless through form, said Prerna Srimali. Approaching Kabir and the idea that the austere absence was difficult, so taking a cue from the significance of the name and its utterance in bhakti expression, Sri Mali turned to his name for inspiration. The three syllables that formed Kabir's name were split up and each was explored for its meaning in keeping with the concept of the parts merging together to become the whole. In the dancer's choreographic structure, the first syllable ka denoted kaya, the body or the material world, which needs to be acknowledged and experienced before it can be transcended. Interestingly, the dancer has inhabited the language of Kathak so consummately that she is able to mold it to her creative and compositional needs. For instance, she briefly adapted a minimalistic gesture of pulling a loom, a reference to Kabir's life as a weaver, adding another layer of implied meaning for the audience. This is not strictly speaking a part of Kathak, but I have made it mine. Whatever I do in the course of a choreographic exploration looks like Kathak, she asserted. Next came Rang from the third syllable Ra. This was an inversion she chose because she wanted to end with B for Biraha, for the endless yearning, which is the final residue in the Bhakti experience. Rang referred to the dissolution of the self and the fact of being dyed in the colors of the one. Rare poem from Kabir's oeuvre was selected to go with each syllable to deepen an exploration of these meanings through restrained abhinay and improvisation. Who can forget the unforgettable Okaharan that used the famed Gujarati art of Akyan, a form of singing, reciting and drum playing that is done by the master narrators, the Manbhats. Kathak dancer and choreographer Kumadini Lakya used a 17th century Akyan text Written by the Gujarati poet Premanand, a Manbhat himself. The Manbhat group, led by Lakya's longtime music collaborator Atul Desai, was placed center stage, and the dance, literally an Akyan Katha, played out around it. By using folklore in this manner, Kumadini Lakya extended the scope of poetry themes in Kathak and, the, and enlarged the spectrum of poetic expressions used in Kathak. It also established the fact that often dancers create anew out of the creativity available in their own backyards. In 1985, Kumadini Lakya choreographed a piece titled The Peg. It was based on a contemporary poem by Sarveshwar Dayal Saxena, who was a personal friend. The piece was based on his poem called Coat, taken from his anthology the poet alluded through the image of a, disc a discarded coat to people's tendency to hang on to one peg or the other, never letting go of the past, unable to act independently and always looking for someone else to ensure their personal fulfillment. Although this choreography came about in rather emotional circumstances, the post-independence period saw the use of some contemporary poets in Kathak's changing literary scape. However, poet Ashok Vajpayee continues to bemoan the fact that while in every department Kathak has evolved in its literature, it has remained stunted. Aditi Mangaldas, who is a disciple of Kumudini Lakya, is fast emulating her guru in this dimension as well of exploring contemporary poetry. In her work, Uncharted Seas, for the Drishtikorn Dance Company, Aditi very effectively used the words of J. Krishnamurti and the poetry of Meera, Rumi, Kabir and Josh 
Malihabadi. Thus, the poetry used after independence in the field of Kathak has been on an all India slate. It started with a harking back to the classical roots and employed some amount of Sanskrit poetry. Thereafter, it celebrated national icons on anniversaries, allowing for an exploration of their work. Just as every Indian felt that they had a right on every inch of India, dancers too, looking for creative inspirations, did not hesitate to go seeking in different parts of India. But they also fell back on unexplored parts of their own literary heritage. Since independence, the poetry of Kathak has retained the traditional, but it has fearlessly explored a multilingual array of new works as well. So this is how we did the journey, albeit small, uh, on the type of poetry that is used in Kathak since independence. You see that there is a constant backward and forward flow. Such is the nature of a parampara. Only that which is param goes par. But we need to keep exploring all around us. So those of you who are dancers, I hope you are taking heed of this. And those of you who are dance scholars will, I hope, be able to read this in the works of dance that you will be seeing in the future. Thank you very much for your attention and I hope to join you in some more um, elements of the dance journey that you are undertaking.